David S. Kidder, new to big, how established businesses can grow like startups. Welcome to the captivating world of Inu to Big by David S. Kidder, a book that explores how established businesses can adopt the mindset and strategies of successful startups. This summary delves into the transformative journey of long-standing companies, highlighting the importance of continuous innovation and bold risk-taking. As you read on, you'll uncover the key principles of the Inu to Big philosophy, learn how businesses can shift their focus from a total addressable market. TAM, to the total addressable problem, TAP, a model, and understand the true potential of fostering a culture that values customer-oriented solutions and celebrates productive failure. The Rise of Shareholder Capitalism In the late 19th century, American businesses were civic-minded and focused on serving customers. However, by the 1960s, megacorporations prioritized accumulating profits and paying executives over fixing customer problems. In response, economists Michael C. Jensen and William H. Meckling published a paper encouraging corporations to prioritize shareholders above all else. This resulted in businesses becoming completely detached from public or consumer needs and obsessed with cutting expenditures to boost stock prices. As a result, they stopped innovating and stopped growing, leading to the rise of shareholder capitalism. Startup Mindset for Sustainable Growth Established businesses tend to become stagnant and face decline due to their focus on shareholder returns. Startups, on the other hand, seek to identify pain points for consumers and provide innovative solutions for long-term growth. Facebook is an example of identifying the need to keep in contact with family and friends, while Deliveroo was founded to provide more delivery options for restaurant cuisine. Startups embrace risk and face the future for continuous growth. The top five companies according to market capitalization in 2018, including Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, and Facebook, have all adopted this startup mentality. This concept is what the author calls the new-to-big philosophy that promotes taking an idea with potential and growing it exponentially. Revitalizing an industry giant How Satya Nadella's vision refounded Microsoft Microsoft was one of the top five companies in terms of market capitalization in 2001, but by 2018, it dropped out of the list. This was due to a lack of innovation and growth after Bill Gates stepped down, and Steve Ballmer followed an uninspired and incremental approach. However, things changed when Satya Nadella was appointed CEO in 2014. Nadella approached his role with a fresh mindset, focusing on the leading indicators of success, such as customer love, instead of lagging indicators such as revenue and profit. He encouraged bold new ideas, experiments, and a long-term vision, shaping Microsoft into a hybrid of entrepreneurship and corporate resources. Nadella's tactics paid off, with a double-digit profit margin growth every quarter. He refounded Microsoft, revitalizing the once stagnant company and proving that innovation is necessary for the survival of established organizations. We can all learn from Microsoft's story that agility and adaptation are vital for success. Revolutionizing Business Models The book challenges the traditional total addressable market, TAM, model of established businesses. While TAM is limited to existing customer needs, the total addressable problem, TAP, model focuses on discovering new customer problems and needs, leading to exponential growth. Businesses using TAM tend to prioritize short-term financial success, causing stagnation and obsolescence. In contrast, TAP uncovers untapped markets that yield enormous returns, as exemplified by the success story of the mobile phone. Anticipating Customer Desires To succeed in the TAP model, companies need to anticipate what customers want by looking at their behavior rather than their words. By taking a voice-of-the-customer approach, businesses can determine whether their ideas have commercial viability. They should be ready to pivot their ideas and be flexible observers. Companies should identify the customer's feeling towards their product rather than merely focusing on the product itself. For example, 
a company producing chewable candy can switch to producing other treats like makeup or houseplants if the original product idea doesn't align with customer desires. The lesson is to have a growth mindset and approach business with flexibility and adaptability. Productive Failure Successful Innovation Through Accepting Mistakes Venture capitalist, Esther Dyson, uses a footer in her email that says, Always make new mistakes. The results of productive failure can be seen in successful products like WD-40 and Bubble Wrap. However, admitting mistakes is not the norm for established companies. The highly competitive executive culture at these companies would rather tiptoe around mistakes than voice their misgivings about the company's direction. But productive failure is important. A big company needs an environment where experimentation and failure is accepted and encouraged. This requires allowing small, fast, and inexpensive failures. Additionally, leaders must be willing to kill off doomed projects and subordinates must confront their superiors with truth. Intrinsic to innovation, the next part will explore how companies can structure themselves to encourage productive failure. Creating the perfect team for entrepreneurial innovation. To successfully transition from a TAM to a TAP mindset in a business, leaders must seek out employees with traits such as adaptability, curiosity, collaboration, and a passion for experimentation. High performers may not be the best fit for innovative entrepreneurship. Seek out free thinkers, contrarians, and iconoclasts who are often passed over for promotion due to their unique qualities. These individuals can detect patterns and build innovative business ideas, change direction quickly without losing momentum, and work collaboratively in a team setting. Passion for experimentation is crucial, and in the next part, we'll delve into financing these innovative ideas without harming the organization. Innovate fearlessly. To invest in new business ideas, companies need to create an always-on mindset. Installing a growth board, which allocates small amounts of funding at the beginning of each project and withdraws it if necessary, is one way to de-risk the venture. The growth board also increases the chances of hitting on a golden idea and encourages the combativeness and urgency seen in startups. Additionally, supporting multiple new business ideas simultaneously, just like investing in the stock market provides a better chance of success. Companies that embrace risk-taking and innovation tend to reap incredible results. In conclusion, New to Big offers an insightful perspective on how established companies can thrive by embracing the entrepreneurial spirit and principles of modern startups. The book's core message revolves around harnessing continuous innovation, adopting a customer-focused approach with the TAP model, and fostering a growth mindset. Through the inspiring journey of Microsoft and its successful strategies for resurgence, this book asserts that reimagining the heart and soul of big corporations can prove vital for their survival in today's fast-paced world. In essence, New to Big serves as a valuable guide for businesses seeking to reinvent themselves and harness their untapped potential for customer-oriented exponential growth.